the Eve Lancet report that you presented on Fabrice, I mean, it contributes towards that, where you're saying nutrition and environment have to come together in this solution. And I guess smart food takes it one step further. It says it's got to be good for you, good for the planet, and good for the farmer. So the whole viability side and that thinking of the, the resilience and, and so forth for the farmer. And the solutions have to look at all those boxes together, um, which means breaking down our silos. And going back to a point you brought up, Meadow, in your questions, um, where you talked about it, it's even breaking down our institutional silos as well. So we don't come in crop focused. We come in, we've got a bigger solution um, that we're all working on. And so we can't come in with our own organisation um, silo. Uh, and we have to think of, any of our solutions have to think of good for you, good for the planet, and good for the farmer. How are we integrating all of that together? Um, and, and I mean, you mentioned before, Meta, about. Um, if we're coming in with a crop, we're not, or the CG's not thinking about vegetables. But I think a, a lot of CG centres are. I mean, if we give an example of a food, um, a school feeding program we looked at, and we were looking at bringing in millets, but when we looked at that and worked with the chefs in designing it, it was looking at the whole balanced diet. What vegetables were in there? How did that complement the other nutrition aspects of the other foods there? So, and, and if we are taking that more holistic approach, then we're actually going to solve our solutions a lot better. So if we stay in our organisation silos, we're not going to come to that solution. So whether we're an NRL centre or a crop centre or an agroecology centre, and, and, and this is something where you know, the one CGIAR needs to make the difference because we're all working on the same problems and the opportunities that are out there. Um, and it's where the funders need to really push as well. Um, so where we've had the vast majority of investment for decades in the wheat, maize and rice. Um, so whether that's the government support, that's the private industry investments, the R&D, it's the product development and it's the development aid. Um, and we have to look more holistically there. But those big three, wheat, maize and rice, have been hugely successful. So how do we learn from them to bring in the diversity as well? And we, we have what we call a food system divide. So because of that, just like a digital or education divide, so if you invest in something, it does really well. So it attracts more investment, so it does even better. And that's where wheat, maize and rice are. And, and we think to make a big difference, be it nutritionally, environmentally, farmer welfare, we've got to look at those staples. Because where in developing countries those staples are 70% of the plate, if we're not diversifying that, we're not going to have the big impact. Um, so how do we learn from the successes of the big three? And what, how they, one reason how they became successful is there was a dedicated effort on them. So how do we have some dedicated efforts on some alternative staples, bring them in, create the big five, lay in the big seven, keep going, but we've got to take that approach. And if we took that approach, and we, as a one CGIR, we took that approach, we would go in together. We would say, right, what is needed in this area? How do we work together on the right crops for the agroecology? Not because we're working on it. And I would give an example in um, where we had a project in Eastern Kenya, where it was traditionally a sorghum and millet growing area. Then during difficult economic times, the government had brought in maize as a free food aid. People got used to eating maize, they started growing maize. Now the maize value chain became well developed. Now the farmers are still growing maize, and yet it survives one in four years. So three in four years they had no crop, yet kept planting maize. Now when you talk to them, it was because it was just easier. The seed system's well developed, so someone comes to the farm gate, basically sells the seed. Uh, someone come to the farm gate, buy the grain. Now if they went back to millets and sorghum, they'd have to find the seed. They'd have to take the product to market. They don't even know how, what price they'd get. Where's the maize? They know pretty much even what price they'd get. So, so it wasn't a case of coming in and just working at the farming end. It was a case of building that value chain, the agribusiness, the seed system, the whole chain. But, but, and it was also going back to even teaching them how to cook it, getting used to the taste of it, so the whole consumer side as well. And, and knowing that they could make the same with garlic, and they could have 50% maize and 50% sorghum. Um, they could diversify the diet, they could diversify on the farm. It's not moving from one extreme to the other. So how do we work together to get the right solutions that suit the diversified diet, the diversified farming system, and make it more resilient and 
viable for the farmer. So unless we come together as one CGIAR, unless we realize we're solving the same one solution, we're not going to have the same one problem. We're not going to have the right solutions. So what the Glance is doing is also pushing that we've got to think together about nutrition and environment um, in all our solutions and then smart food would add and the farmer, livelihood and welfare too. We need data and analysis on which parts of that value chain are most impacting on nutrition and environment and farmer welfare. So for example, um, if we've developed a new variety that's got 30% more iron and then um, the wheat and rice are being highly refined and the nutrition stripped out of it, all those efforts have just been lost. So any one intervention is only as valuable as that strength of that whole value chain. And we have to, we have to take responsibility. It doesn't mean we do it. We have to take responsibility of that whole value chain and in the end how it's impacting. Um, and so we do need data that's outside of what we do. And I think oh, we're going to pick up our funders again. Um, I find the challenge is the CG is still put in the pigeonhole of being a crop um, improvement um, sort of area. And of course that's our specialty and will stay that way. Um, but we have to be seen as we're looking at the whole bigger solution. Okay, we have to work with partners, etc. but we have to take responsibility. It doesn't mean we do it, but we have to be responsible and thinking bigger. And the whole processing side and how that's impacting as well and how we work together with those partners, I think. And the data part is part of that, thinking bigger with our data. It relates a little bit to the urban, rural, and also to the demand side. Um, just in this, how this, how we're tackling some of that in the smart food approach. So in our number one objective, which is about diversifying staples, and we've selected millet and sorghum as the first one, but not to stop, stop there, but because you need a dedicated effort if you're going to bring something in as a staple. Um, so although we start with our focus on caring about the poor, the rural poor, um, we recognise if you're going to make a change, then you've got to think a lot bigger. You've got to think urban markets and you've got to think global markets because if we want to bring something as a, as a staple, um, it needs a huge value change. It needs to be globalised. It needs to be commoditised as well. You need to have the big companies and processes engaged and taking this on as well. So you have to think bigger even though you start with a particular group that you're focused on making sure that there's a, a better world for them. Um, and, um, and then as part of that is that, you know, making sure it's good for you, the planet, the farmer, in the way you do it. And, um, and it's about shifting demand as well. If we stayed always using our data, just extrapolating what the future is, we'd never have any mega change in this whole food system, which we really need. So we do have, and the smart food approach is saying, the mega change we need, we need to work starting at the consumer end, drive it to consumers, and work with processes and get that driven, and then get the attention and, and, and hopefully get the government attention behind that. And actually there was a very good comment made yesterday by the woman from the pork. When they were talking about traceability, and I asked from the audience, I asked what will be, who will be the big change makers here in traceability? And she said, consumers will be the big change makers from a sustainability, from a long-term sustainable perspective, whereas the government's going to make the change in the short term, the quick change. Um, so we have to think about all these elements in, in making big change.